All right, guys, today I thought it would be fun to go over my collection in a little bit of a different manner. Now, I usually try to do collection videos periodically, sometimes a little bit more than less, because I know you guys really like to see them. And I thought today it would be particularly fun to do an interesting take on my collection, and that is pricing out my collection and going over how much is my EDC knife collection worth. Now, before we get into this, some kind of housekeeping rules about my collection. And of course, whenever going over how much money you know you have invested in trucks, you know houses, um, anything that is or could be considered an asset, even things like artwork or digital artwork. You know, um, it always gets controversial. And understand that a few things here. This is what I see my knives worth, whether I paid that much for them or whether they would actually sell for as much as I say they are and going to or how much they are worth is a different story as well. And I think that that's worth noting when it comes to discussing the net worth of any one person or item, you know, a vehicle might be, you know, collectively speaking worth $50,000, but could you actually sell it in this market and get $50,000 is another question. So sometimes, you know, you can sell a knife and get more than what you paid for it. Sometimes you can sell and get less than what you paid for or what you value that item as. So take this video with a grain of salt. In addition to, I want to note that, you know, like whenever I do videos like this, people say, you know, like, how, what do you do for a living? You know, you must be exorbitantly wealthy. And while certainly I am well paid, I don't really consider myself wealthy by any means. I just put a lot of time, money, and energy into knives because of my YouTube channel. And for the simple fact that I actually really like knives. I like carrying different knives. And most of all, what I really like is experiencing different people's, like makers' takes on different tools for everyday carry. So that's really the whole, the core of it, you know. Um, if I was exorbitantly wealthy, I would really have a lot of everything, right? Like I have a lot of knives and a lot of money in knives, but you know, I might only have like one or two EDC handguns, right? And actually I have like four or five EDC handguns, but you know, the, the that is kind of the principle, right? Like I only have a handful of handguns where I have like 40 plus knives, right? So anyways, those are some of the groundkeeping rules. Um, so those are some of the groundkeeping rules as far as it goes. Um, you know, like I said, not super wealthy, just put a lot of money into knives, really love knives personally. And once again, this is my personal opinion and assessment of these knives. Also too, just the last groundkeeping kind of part to this is that some of these knives are rare, collectible, and one of ones. So when it comes to pricing those out, they are going to be more expensive because of their collectability. But also when, th when talking about like full customs, one of ones, ones, it's difficult to put an exact price point on them because they could go for more, they could go for less. It really depends. There's only one of one, um, you know, of those particular knives. So anyways, that is kind of the groundkeeping rules. I'm sorry, it took me so many minutes to say this, but there's a lot of things I kind of wanted to say before going into this video um, due to the nature of the video. All right. Also, too, to the best of my knowledge, I'm going to try to go through these in least expensive to most expensive. So if you want to see the real expensive knives, you're going to have to stay to, to the end. But let's jump right into it. So first off, uh, what I believe to be the least expensive knife in the collection is going to be my Spyderco Centafonte. Now, some people may under, or may not even know what the heck a Centafonte is. It is called a Centafonte. And this is a older made um, Japanese made. Spyderco that was designed to kind of be, they say like a luxury knife, but it was really just designed to be more of kind of like a nicer looking version of things like the Delica. So if you look at, you know, like a Delica like this, it kind of looks a little rough and tumble, right? It looks very utilitarian, whereas the Centafonte looks a little bit cleaner, a little bit nicer. Ultimately speaking, it has like the blade length of something like the Endura or really more closely to the Endella because it's definitely longer than a Delica 4 by like a half inch, but not like substantially longer. Anyways, it's made in Seki City, Japan out of VG10. And yeah, it is just basically, and yeah, it's basically just a really nice uh, kind of, you know, more budget knife. Now I'm going to actually start a rolling tally uh, on my phone here real quick. And I'm gonna just price that at like $30. Not too crazy, not too expensive. 
Next one up is going to be, if I can pull it out, the CRKT Large Pilar with the Flytanium Full Carbon Fiber Scale. Now, I'm pricing this thing at $40. This thing, arguably speaking, could probably go for more. Um, and I did not put this carbon fiber scale on here. I actually traded into this knife, but um, this scale alone is like 50 bucks. But once again, you know, arguably speaking, you probably would get about 40 bucks for this knife. It's not a bad knife at all, but that is my modded large CRKT Pilar. And like I said, I'm gonna say it's about 40 bucks. All right, next one up is going to be the Kershaw and Emerson collaboration CQC6. And this one's in D2. These things are fairly pricey, I think for what they are in my opinion, but they do, I mean, they're not too bad, I guess. Um, ultimately, it's a cool knife. I do like it, but like I said, CRKT, um, or not CRKT, uh, Kershaw, Emerson um, CQC6 in D2. These guys usually run for about 50 bucks. So we're gonna say about 50 bucks. Once again, I'm not too critical with these cheaper knives because they are what they are. All right, next one up, we're gonna talk about the Benchmade Mini Grips as a whole. So we're gonna talk about, this is the first one up, the Mini Grip. This is a like older school one with the Cyan handles in 154 CM. It's a great knife, really do love this guy. And I'm gonna say that it's worth probably about 60 bucks. It's nothing too crazy because it is an older model with the 154 CM. Next to that, we're gonna go over the, um, so next to that would be the Benchmade full-sized Griptilian, and this is a 550. It's a user, it's a beater. We're gonna also say 60 bucks. Okay, so next to that one, we're going to talk about the mini grip the second mini grip that I have, this is the 557 the Tonto tipped version of the mini grip. And this one is wearing G10 custom scales. And like I said, has the S30V blade on it. So I would say with its furniture and upgraded steel choice that it's probably going to run closer into the ballpark of like $90. So we're gonna say 90 bucks for that guy. All right, next two up was kind of a two for deal here are going to be both of my Demco Knives 8020.5s. So both of these are OS 10 Taiwanese made. The only real difference aside from the color of the scales is that this is the sheep's footed blade and this one is the clip point or drop point, whatever you'd like to call it. Both of them are really cool knives. I actually like both of my 8020.5s and we're gonna say that they're both usually like you can find these for about $110. So we're going to say $220 for both of them. Okay, the next ones up are going to be the Hogue Deca and the Benchmade Bug Out. Both of these are very similar. Um, the Hogue Deca is going to be another one that's going to go for about, I would say, $120. So put $120 up. And then the Benchmade Bug Out is a little bit harder to price because this is a limited edition Bug Out. So this one is the Blade HQ exclusive CPM 20 CV uh, G10 handles. And I'm going to say roughly with this one, $160 because they. I just saw one go for like 170 and mine is a little bit of a user, but it still is pretty clean. I'm not going to lie. All right. Um, totally glazing over some other ones that are a little bit cheaper. My total bad. We're going to talk about the Delica 4. This is the next one up. And this guy is normally a fairly expensive knife, the Delica 4 in K390. But this guy is no doubt a user and an abuser. So this one I would say is probably closer to like 70 bucks, we'll say. Totally did not mean to glaze over that knife. Um, let's see what else is here. We'll say the Spyderco Para 3. I think this one goes, this is like a pretty plain Jane Para 3, nothing too fancy. CPM S35 or S30V, sorry, and black G10 handles. So this one's about 130 bucks, not too crazy. Okay, next to that is the ZT Zero 
450. Now this is a very, very clean version of it in carbon fiber. And I would say this one probably is about 120 to 140. We'll say 140 for the sake of conversation. These guys are a little bit more questionable because unfortunately the resale value on ZTs is not super high. And that's because the consumer demand for them is not terribly expensive. However, if you were to go try to buy a ZT0 450 like new off of Amazon, it would be like $200. So I'm just putting it somewhere in that realm of a reason. Okay. Next one up is going to be the Spyderco Manix 2. Now, the reason why I'm pricing this one a little bit lower is because this one does have S110V for the blade steel. So super premium blade steel, but it does just have the black G10 handles. So I'm going to say about $170 on this guy. All right, next one up is going to be the Benchmade Mini Adamus or 273. And this one, of course, is a newer knife in CPM Crewwear. And for this guy, I'm going to say about 180. So 180. Okay, next to that one, let's see. I think the Tour Chasm is a pretty close or pretty comparable in price knife. This one's about 180 as well. And pretty cool knife overall, but pretty small. So 180 for that one as well. Okay, next one up. And this one's kind of hard to price because the Paragon uh, Warlock slash Phoenix are really uncommon knives. So you don't really see them a whole lot out in the wild. But I would say roughly $150 for it. Okay. That should be the last of the sub $200 knives as I'm looking at the collection, just trying to make sure I didn't miss anything super obvious. Um, I think we'll start off the 200 plus club with the Spyderco smock. Now this is one, some people like the, the smock really, especially on the secondary goes both ways. Sometimes you'll find them for really good deals at like $160. And sometimes you'll find them for $220, $240. So it really depends if you can find a good deal on them, you can sometimes scoop them up for under $200. But generally speaking to level it out, I'm just gonna say $200. Next to the smock at $200 as well, I would also put my ZT0562 carbon fiber. Now this one is a bit of a user. So these traditionally go for, you know, around um, in like brand new state, about $240. But because mine's a user and because it was starburst anodized, we're gonna say about 200 bucks. Next to that one, I would say stepping it up to like $210 is going to be the Spyderco Spidey Chef. And uh, this one's a little bit more of an expensive knife. Of course, you're dealing with full uh, titanium frame lock. And yeah, I think like MSRP is definitely a little bit more, but this one's a user and I own it. So probably less than MSRP. Okay, next to that are gonna be my Emerson's. And I think so first up are my two Emersons, and I would put each of these at about $200. Now, a lot of people may be like, what $200 for these Emersons? And Emersons are very controversial because they, um, they don't seem like they are worth a lot, but they actually hold their value incredibly well. And the people who love Emersons, it's almost like a cult following. So Emersons tend to be very much in the same group as uh, your Striders, like your Strider knives, like SNGs. Like they, on the face, don't necessarily seem like they're worth a lot, but they actually hold their value very well and do go for a lot of money. Okay, next one up is going to be, making sure I'm not missing anything, I would say the TRM Neutron. And the TRM Neutron, I would say is probably closer to a 200. Once again, we'll put it at $210 valuation. Next up is going to be I would say my Spyderco Paramilitary 2. And the reason why I didn't put this one lower is because it is a special edition cutlery shop exclusive with CPM Racks 45. And these honestly go for about 250 bucks. So a little bit steep, but that is the ultimate kind of like reality to limited edition Spydercos. Next one up, I would say in the $200, and I'd say like the last of these, it is a, like a really a $200 knife, would be the Emerson Ensar. Now the Ensar might be able to go for a little bit more, but I would put the Ensar at about a $250 valuation. And that's primarily because, once again, mine's actually in pretty much unused condition. And secondly, Ensars are incredibly rare. 
rare. If you buy one new from Emerson, they're 300 bucks. But outside of that, good luck trying to even find an NSAR because they are just ridiculously rare. Okay, now stepping it up into three, the $300 range or close to that, I would say the last one up that's technically in the 200s is this guy, probably about 280. For those wondering, it's a Protect Strider SNG. Mine actually might be a little bit less than 280. We're going to say 280 for now, um, just because mine does have a bit of use on it. Like, honestly, the blade scratched a little bit, but it's actually in really great condition. So we'll just say 280 for now. And once again, people may feel free to disagree with the prices I put on these knives. Okay, stepping it up, actually, we really don't have anything in here. I guess I would say the only thing that would be in the $300 club would be my Hinder XM18 three inch version. So this is a smaller version of the XM18 and this guy is gonna be at about 375. Okay, now stepping it up into the $400 price range, the first one up is the McNeese Mac 2. Now this is a three inch version of the McNeese Mac 2, but these guys are really expensive, like no doubts, um, they are very expensive knives. So this one, even at the smaller size, is about a $400 knife. So it's gonna be $400. <laughs> okay. I think that's about the only one here that's in for the $400 range. I totally overlooked the Auto Adamus. The Auto Adamus is actually surprisingly expensive and it is worth noting this guy is about $280. I am doing a fantastic job at making sure I go from highest to lowest and uh, absolutely failing at that. <laughs> it's also worth noting I totally failed to say um, or talk about my Microtech Ultratech and this one's a double edge but it is a heavy user so I would put it at probably $250 as well. So anyways those are those knives that I totally forgot. Um, okay now let's talk about so I bought some more expensive knives. So first up, I think of the more expensive knives that's still cheaper is going to be the Skirmish by Benchmade. This is a 650, or sorry, 630 full-sized Skirmish. And this guy is, I would say about $500. And that's because one, it's in very clean condition and you know, very little blade uh, wear on it, or there's like no wear on it um, from use. So super clean, not to say that I try to keep these knives clean. I use them as I have to, but that one I'm gonna say is a $500 knife because they are stupidly rare to try to get. Um, also, because I threw a couple fixed blades in here and just forgot to take them out of my case, we'll throw the uh, Half Face Blades Extremis in here. And it's a 400, I wanna say, we'll say $400 knife. Okay, that is that guy out of the way. And let's see here. I think at this point, it's the Hinder XM18. And this guy is also going to be at a $500 price point. Some people may disagree, but this guy is buttery smooth and overall an incredible, really awesome knife. So it is 500 bucks. Not to say that an incredible knife makes it super expensive, but it is expensive for a reason. It's very well made. Okay, then next up is going to, to be my two Chris Reeves, or actually I think I'll do all of my Chris Reeves here together. So we have the Incosi Micarta Inlay, and we have the Sebenza 21 Micarta Inlay, and we also have the Chris Reeve Knives Umnum Zon. Of course, they don't make these in Micarta Inlay. So all three of these knives together, I'm just gonna say all together, they're $500 a piece or $1,500. Okay, now into the home stretch. <laughs> Next up, we got the Strider SNG, and this guy is going to be 600 bucks. Then we have the Heretic Knives Manticore Bounty Hunter, or sorry, Manticore X Bounty Hunter. This is the larger version of the Bounty Hunter, and uh, these guys are really cool, very rare. Now, originally, MSRP on these was $600, but because you legitimately cannot find them anymore, their collectability, they're closer to $700. Next one up is going to be my Spartan Blades Spartan Harzy Folder or 
SHF. And once again, this is a 2021 limited edition. This is what they consider the Battle Babe version. So that's what this uh, kind of inscription here or this picture on the handles is. And then what makes this one a little bit more expensive than factory is the full Chad Nichols Damascus steel blade. So this is also the large version of the um, Spartan Blades uh, Spartan Harsey folder. So it is an expensive guy. I'm also putting it at $700 new. It was uh, like $650, but once again, obviously with collectability, you really can't find them if you want them. So it's a little bit more expensive at $700. Then lastly, completing the collection and being worth more than a fair chunk of this collection is my full custom Gavco nurse. And this guy is once again, a one of one. And this is the only one in the collection that is a true one of one. And so it is kind of hard to price it out, but it is going to be $1,200. And that's the only reason I'm going off of that is because that's what it sold for. Um, from Gavco. So that's what it literally went for. That's how I got to that price point is it went for $1,200. So that's what I am using to dictate its price. So overall, I am going to, I think, try to uh, put in or like annotate the prices as it goes up. But if I fail to, for whatever reason, that is what I came up with. That's the number $11,255 is what I came up with for my collection. Now, once again, as I begin to put these knives away, a long process, um, this is what I believe the collection is worth. Someone else may not be willing to pay the price for all of these knives, right? Like that is what I feel the collection is worth, but someone else might not. So, you know, everyone's going to think that this collection is worth something different. And that's the whole, and that's the whole crux of kind of collecting knives. That's why in the past I have explicitly talked about, you know, like don't collect knives specifically for the hope to make money on them or to resale them for a higher price than what you paid for, you know, uh, because you may not be able to do that. You may not be able to recoup those funds. And so, you know, definitely um, take this video with a grain of salt. Like I said, that's roughly an approximation of what I've spent on these knives. And uh, it's definitely quite a bit of money, but also it's worth stating too, as I struggle to put these knives away, uh, it's worth noting too that a lot of this collection didn't happen overnight, or actually really none of this collection happened overnight. And uh, I did add a significant portion of knives to this collection in the past year, like in the past 12 months. But at the same time too, I've only added about, like only about half of this collection is actually new. Um, in like with got within the last year. So a lot of these knives I've had for a very long time. So, you know, this stuff doesn't come overnight and uh, you shouldn't necessarily expect to just wake up one day and like have a full collection, right? So anyways, that's kind of my little rant as I put all of my knives away but hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully it was fun looking at these blades and hopefully you enjoyed figuring out just about how much my collection is worth. It's probably not worth as much as most people would think because I get so many comments of like, man, his collection must be worth like $50,000. And it's like, it's easy to see, you know, like one of my custom, you know, like my Gavco and think that I have, you know, this hugely expensive collection, but it is definitely not the truth. My collection is not quite as expensive as many people would think initially. But uh, yeah, anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.